Hello, Blazers. Welcome to week five. Wow, I can't believe it's been five weeks since I've been with you in my classroom. I miss you guys so much. I am quite sure that you are missing school, even those of you that weren't missing it right off the bat. It's been a long time that we've been working from home. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed the lessons that we've been doing. I've been trying to make sure that you have fun things to do every week. This week, we are going to be doing a bridge building challenge. And before uh, I get started on the details and the, and the back um, information and everything, I just want to reassure you not to be worried if you don't have a lot of materials at your house, okay? I think you will be able to find an idea of a way to build a bridge, but if you can't think of anything and you can't find anything, it's okay. Just enjoy this video, think about it for a bit, and then go ahead and get the rest of your work done, okay? But I do want you to just remember that sometimes finding the materials is just about thinking outside the box. It's just about thinking about what you have available and then using that. Now, I know whenever we think about building certain things, sometimes we think about things that have to be like glued or taped together, and so it uses it up. But it doesn't have to be that. It can be anything that you have available. I'm gonna show you some examples at the end of some different materials that I've seen used for this. And I think you'll be able to find something if you'll just get a little creative and think outside the box. Now, last week we talked about being an engineer and how being an engineer is about building something that serves a purpose. Now, this challenge this week serves a very specific purpose. A bridge is a structure that's used to span over a gap. Sometimes that is other roadways. Sometimes that might be water. Sometimes they might be trying to build a highway through an area that has a lot of hills or mountains. And so they might need to uh, span an area between two of those hills that's just like a lower area. And so they use a bridge for that. Now, I can explain a lot about bridges, but I know it's very entertaining whenever someone does it in a fun way. So I have a YouTube video I'm going to share with you where we are going to learn about bridges. So here we go. You know, it may not seem like it, but the cities and towns that we live in are all built using the same rules as our little pretend village over here. It's just that the real ones are bigger. And one of our viewers, six-year-old Hannah from the UK, wanted to know how some of the things that we build stay standing. So she sent us a really great question. Why are bridges so strong? Excellent question. Sometimes when a road or railroad track needs to go across something big like a river or a deep valley, experts called engineers design and build bridges to do that job. And bridges can be really busy. Take, for example, what's said to be the world's busiest bridge, the George Washington Bridge in New York City. Look at all those cars and trucks. Wow. It has to be pretty sturdy to carry so many people and cars. For a bridge to carry that much weight, it has to be built of special material like iron and steel. But it takes more than tough materials to make a strong bridge. So let's look at how bridges work. One very simple kind of bridge is called a beam bridge. When we say simple, we really do mean simple. A beam bridge can be just a log that you use to walk across a stream or put a long strip of cardboard between two short blocks. That's a beam bridge too. All bridges can hold a certain amount of weight, but what happens if we put too much weight on a beam bridge? Let's find out. It collapses. So a bridge that carries trucks and cars, which are very heavy, would have to be stronger than a bridge that carries bikes or people on foot, which are lighter. So how do we make stronger bridges? Well, over time, people have learned that certain shapes can be used to make stronger bridges. Take a look at this railroad bridge. It has to be strong because it carries trains. What shape do you see? That's right, triangles. And that's not by accident. The fact is triangles are really strong shapes for building. If you put force on one side of a triangle, it bends. But if you put force on its point, it keeps its shape. That's because the two sides of the triangle are pushed down by the force and the bottom gets stretched out to both sides. Each side feels the force, but none of them bends. And this makes the triangle a really sturdy and stable shape. This is why you'll see lots of triangles and bridges, both above the part that you actually travel on called the deck and below it. The long string of triangles that you see in a bridge is called a truss. Trusses help a bridge spread out the weight that it has to carry. But not all bridges are made of trusses. If a bridge has to cross a really wide body of water, it might be too difficult or expensive to build a truss bridge. So engineers 
designed another kind of bridge called the suspension bridge. The Golden Gate Bridge in California is a great example of a suspension bridge. Suspension bridges work by using a force called tension. Tension is just pulling something tight. Suspension bridges are made of a deck that's hung or suspended from thick cables that stretch from one side of the bridge to the other. These cables are supported by tall towers and then are held down tightly or anchored on both ends. Suspension bridges are strong because the force on the bridge gets spread out. The weight of the cars or trains or horses, whatever is traveling across it, pulls on the cables, creating tension. Those cables then pull down on the towers and also pull on the anchors on either end of the bridge to hold up the deck. I could go on and on about all kinds of clever bridges, but basically, bridges are strong not only because they're made of strong materials, but also because of the smart designs dreamed up and planned by engineers. So thanks for asking, Hannah, and thank you for hanging out with us at SciShow Kids. See you next time. All right. So those are some of the types of bridges. I'm gonna stop sharing that. And actually I have a little picture that I'm gonna show you. So these are the three types of bridges that I want you to focus on when you're thinking about your bridge building challenge. The first one is the beam bridge. This is the one that she talked about that could be as simple as a log stretching across like um, between two cliffs, okay? Uh, you'll notice in the picture here that there's also some pillars that go down from the beam bridge. Those just help support it. Now, if it's a really short beam bridge, you may not need any pillars or supports that are going vertically. But if it's a very long beam bridge, then you probably are going to need to have some pillars to support that. The next one is an arch bridge. She didn't really talk about this too much, but simply the idea is that by putting that arch or that kind of semicircle or or moon shape on the bottom it makes it really really strong and it can help support that beam across the top she talked about suspension bridges this one is probably the most difficult for you to um build in your your bridge building challenge but you could absolutely um try to do this yourself if you wanted to and string some uh string or some kind of wire or cable or whatever that you have at home most likely most of you are going to use the beam style bridge now in my little chart here none of these show examples of the trusses that she talked about but you could combine trusses with any one of these styles of bridges and it would be just great now i'm going to show you a few example pictures of different types of ways that people have met the bridge building challenge so let's look at this first one so in this picture they have used straws and masking tape. Now they're using just like a little Dixie cup here to put their weight in to see how much weight that their bridge can hold. That was a good idea. A lot of you might have straws and tape at home. This is the one that my son built earlier today um, using those giant Jenga blocks that we used last time. And so this would be considered a beam bridge and then he has uh, some pillars here as support on the bottom. Now he's made all of this a nice solid surface. And then he decided to use just books to see how much weight his bridge could hold. You can see this is a pretty sturdy bridge. He did a good job. We need to get to the ottoman. We can definitely take just about anything across that bridge. This is an example of using index cards to build bridges. And we have four different types. Um, of bridges here. These two are actually the same type. These are both beam bridges, right? So this one just has pillars and this one doesn't. Now this one has pillars because as we talked about, it is a longer distance between the two books. And so it's necessary to have those pillars. Now I'm quite sure that they're using some tape on this. So you could definitely do that. Here we have that arch underneath the beam to do an arch bridge. And here is a nice suspension bridge like that. They've taped it down to the table too on both sides. Love it, great examples. Index cards, maybe you have paper, maybe you have cardboard. All of these could be made in that way. Then we have good old Legos. You have Legos at home, you could work on building this kind of a bridge challenge. And popsicle sticks and glue. You have popsicle sticks or tongue depressors. This is a great, now this is an example of that truss style bridge where they're using those triangles 
to give it maximum support. Okay, this is a really good example. So these are the three types, beam, arch, and suspension, and then of course, using trusses wherever that you can. Now, what I would challenge you to do is once you've built a bridge, now before you build it, if you have multiple people in your house that are wanting to do this, I would set up a, a competition between yourselves. Decide what the challenge is and make sure it's the same for everybody, and then set up a little competition. Who can build a bridge that will hold the most Hot Wheel cars, that will hold the most Lego minifigs, that will hold the most marbles or pennies or rocks or whatever it is you used last year. Uh, for the foil boat challenge since you already have those around um, set that up and then everyone do it together if you don't have anyone in your house then just challenge yourself once you've built a bridge and once you've been able to drive a car across it see if you can put two cars on it see if you can put five cars on it can you make your bridge longer can you make your bridge hold more weight could you challenge yourself to build an entirely different type of bridge if you built a beam bridge to begin with can you change it and make yours a suspension or, a, uh, or an arch style bridge, okay? I hope that you are having a great time doing these STEAM activities. There's another one coming this week, so watch for that video. Uh, enjoy your bridge challenge. As always, feel free to send me any pictures of your bridges that you make. Can't wait to see what I get in my email. It's jengreenwell at moreschools.com. Uh, I am missing you guys so much, but I know that you guys are doing a great job at home. Can't wait till I see you again. Bye now.